Welcome to video number 25 in my series of presentations that will attempt to demystify tourism. I'm Dr. Stan McGahee, the creator and narrator of the videos. Their content is based on my experiences worldwide as a professor, consultant, writer, manager, and tourist in more than 80 countries on six continents. Countless destinations and businesses compete for tourists throughout the world. So how do destinations know how to utilize their resources to achieve optimal success? The answer is research. They gather data and information and analyze them to make informed decisions. Tourism research enables destinations to do things such as understand and identify their most favorable source markets, develop the attractions, facilities, and systems necessary to satisfy their target markets wants and needs, measure their performance, and predict future developments. Tourism research also examines the many underlying principles of tourism as an experience and as an industry. Tourism research is another administrative expense in terms of the professional staff and their activities and required support. Primary research is original research that is custom designed and conducted to achieve a specific purpose for the research unit. It is costly and time consuming but directly addresses the research topic. Secondary research saves money and time by utilizing existing research data or findings in a new research project. However, caution must be exercised to ensure secondary research actually applies to the new project. Depending on its purpose, research can be categorized as descriptive, explanatory, predictive, or applied. Tourism research uses all four. Descriptive research uses statistics to describe the data and characteristics of the research topic. Explanatory research looks for causation and asks why by identifying variables and developing a hypothesis that is either proven or disproven. Predictive research predicts future outcomes based on past numbers, behaviors, and attitudes. Applied research probes for facts and makes subjective recommendations for improvements in regards to real-world problems rather than just developing new theories. Once a problem exists that needs formal research, a series of steps must be completed to study it properly and present the results. The following steps are typically used in the research process. Number one, identification of research problem, what is being studied. Two, situation analysis, which is relevant background information. Three, informal investigation, which is enhancing the researcher's knowledge and creating possible hypotheses. Four, Research design, which is finalizing any hypotheses, identifying variables, determining required data, and selecting methodologies. Five, data collection, which is conducting actual research procedures. Six, analysis and interpretation, which is coding, tabulating, analyzing, and interpreting collected data. Seven, findings, which is recognizing new knowledge and its application. And eight, written report, which is the details of all research steps and their conclusions. Quantitative research is objective and involves hard data. It converts observations into numbers and then mathematically crunches them using a variety of statistical methods. Qualitative research is subjective. It relies on researchers' personal observations, interviews, and expert analysis and is presented in a more expressive written form. It also allows for multiple viewpoints and a multicultural perspective. Broadly speaking, quantitative research is more of a science and qualitative research is more of an art. Many research projects utilize both approaches to study various aspects of a particular problem. Surveys, also known as the questionnaire technique, are the most commonly used methodology in tourism research. They are based on the simple idea if you want to know what people think, ask them. There are three types of surveys. One, opinion, in which respondents express opinions, beliefs, attitudes, or evaluations about a topic. Two, interpretive, in which respondents are asked why they did something or made a particular choice. And three, factual, in which questions elicit a specific factual response about a topic. Questionnaires can be administered via personal interviews, mail, telephone, or electronic devices. The questions may be open-ended or close-ended, and they must be free of bias. 
Open-ended questions are often used in qualitative research or at the end of a closed-ended questionnaire so respondents can provide additional information or thoughts about the topic. Closed-ended questions are easier to tabulate and often use a simple multiple-choice format. Respondents can also be asked to rank answers, assign numerical values, or select specific categories. The Likert scale is used to determine the degree of concurrence respondents have with a statement. Its five responses range from strongly agree and agree to neutral, disagree, and strongly disagree. In addition to questionnaire surveys, tourism research uses various other methods of inquiry. Number one, focus groups bring together a cross-section of 8 to 12 people to discuss a topic such as tourist motivations. Two, the Delphi method consists of tourism experts being surveyed about a topic with various rounds of questions being asked until a consensus is reached. Three, observations study topics as they occur in real life situations. And four, experiments examine the effect of a dependent variable when an independent variable is manipulated by a researcher in a controlled situation. Most tourism organizations, ranging from convention and visitors bureaus to national tourist offices, collect data on their destination and then analyze and publish them in monthly, quarterly, and annual reports. Among the most common and useful categories are number one, total arrivals, two, total receipts, three, length of stay, four, purpose of travel, five, transportation, and six, gateways. Most of the data is broken down by time frames, source markets, and major markets, plus comparisons with the previous month, quarter, and year, tables showing changes over multiple years, and rankings by multiple source markets. Many categories also include data on tourist characteristics, such as age, gender, occupation, motivations, activities, and spending patterns. NTOs also research outbound tourism using many of the same categories in order to determine the country's overall tourism balance. Most data used by tourist offices are collected and reported by government agencies and tourism suppliers. For example, for countries with formal border controls, data on tourist arrivals, nationality, and other categories can be obtained from the arrival cards completed when processing through immigration. Statistics compiled by airlines, hotels, cruise lines, and tour companies, as well as other tourism suppliers that charge a mandated tourist tax, can also provide useful data. In other situations, questionnaire surveys with sufficient sample sizes are used. Research is gathering data that when analyzed create new knowledge that helps solve a problem, measure performance, make improvements, explain a concept, or plan for the future. Tourism research is available in many tourist office reports, in numerous tourism journals and technical reports, and at tourism conferences worldwide. Private companies such as Smith Travel Research collect data and create regular reports available for a fee. Now I invite you to watch video number 26, Tourism Organizations. Thank you.